What's up, guys? Welcome to Rotor Right, and today I'm here with Zoe. Hey, what's up? And myself, Cricket. Mm -hmm. And Zoe is the queen of 3D flying. So they say. No, she's the queen. <laughs> Me, I'm just a regular, ordinary freestyle. No, pilot. no, you're the king of backwards flight. <laughs> I, I, I try to fly backwards a little bit. Let's just go back and explain what 3D flying actually is. Uh, so, as I'm flying a machine, you have thrust downwards. At any given point in time, I can apply thrust in the opposite direction. So you can do like TikToks, crazy maneuvers that you can only do with a 3D helicopter, but now you can do them with a 3D quad. Mind blown. <laughs> Mind blown. So if you can imagine going from your traditional flying to actually just switching over to 3D, I mean it's like complete, like taking and putting the training wheels back on and you're learning the whole thing over again. Now I had an experience in, where are we at? On a quad camp in San Diego. San Diego, and I got a chance to fly 3D over concrete for the first time. With my quad. With which her was quad. With her only 3D quad at the yeah, time. That was nerve wracking. <laughs> it's, it's in one piece though. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to see how this all works out today. So this is Zoe's traditional, well not her traditional, this is her personal frame. This is my personal frame. My design, and this is actually designed for the IQ motion control modules, which are a 3D specific motor. But I've been flying them with the Hype Trains. I really like these, they're super smooth, really great. The 2207 2450, they provide a great deal of thrust, they're really smooth, and they work good from four to five cell, which is what I've been flying with 3D lately. Now, I'm not gonna have a fancy machine like that. <laughs> so what we actually did was we got the Rotorite Flow Frame, but I do like the fact that you don't have to use you can use everything that you originally have right now to actually fly 3D. Yeah, you don't need a new or specific setup to actually do 3D with. Um, this is a thing that I think really trips out pilots. They think, I need special motors, I need special ESCs, I need special props, I need a frame for it. Realistically, any frame, any setup can do 3D as long as it's modern and made within the last like two years. See that? So you can all try this. We're gonna make this happen today. We're gonna to do this. And then you at home, you do this, and we'll, we'll reconvene back in the comment <laughs> section. And we'll see how it works out for everybody. So this was flying yesterday on 2D. Okay. So today, it's just gonna be hook it up to our laptop, and yeah. we're gonna make it work. So the first things we have to do is configure the ESCs for 3D mode. We'll bring it into the BL Heli 32 suite, and we'll switch the ESCs into bi-directional mode, which is fairly simple. Then from there, we have to configure the flight controller for 3D. Again, a simple checkmark box, adding a switch in the toggle uh, menu, and then essentially flying it. A little bit of setup, but only take us a few minutes. Nice. So now we got our quad with our USB hooked up and our battery is connected. Props are off for safety. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open BL Heli 32. So the first thing I like to do, this is just not just 3D, this is any. I just like to check and make sure all our ESCs are, are matching. matching and everything showing up. So right now we're on three point, we're on three two point six. Okay. So now we're gonna let you take this over and you explain to me how we do this. Okay, so this might sound complicated, but it's actually really easy. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go to motor direction mm -hmm. and you can go to bi-directional or with the newer ESCs, bi-directional soft. And this is the, probably the one thing that's not gonna make sense to anybody. If you do, for, if your motor direction says normal, you have to go bi-directional soft reversed. It's something to do with the fact that the D-Shot implementation with the ESCs is not done correctly, and KISS ESCs don't have this issue. It's only on the BL Heli 32 stuff. So now we're gonna hit right setup, which it should just do it on one ESC, and we'll have to go through all of them individually to set them up. Okay. So like, num motor number two is reversed, so we're gonna go bi-directional soft, and that will actually keep the motor direction going the right way. Okay, that makes sense. It makes no sense. It makes sense though, which are like that we have to do each one individually. Yeah. yeah. So again, we're just going to bi-directional soft reversed, and the difference between the two is soft tends to make the transitions a little bit smoother, which is something you're definitely going to want if you're getting into three D. <laughs> we're hoping for soft maneuvers here. Okay. <laughs> no hard crashing is not our plan today. Now with that, we've configured the ESCs. There's nothing more we really have to do. Although, if you want to decrease your switching times, there is one thing you can do, and that's actually change your ramp up power from 50% to 100%. Ooh, I like 100%. Yeah. So you think I can fly this in the warehouse? <laughs> so now that we have the ESCs configured, we're gonna go into beta flight and configure beta flight for 3D mode. Now I know nothing about beta flight. I'm a flight one guy. 
the earlier days. Yeah, so this Flight One here. doesn't have three D mode yet. Um, I heard Preston's working on it, and something that I'd really like to see, especially since I talked to them about how they could do motor mixing a little bit differently and possibly better than Beta Flight. So we're going to connect up to beta flight, and then the first thing you're going to go do is go to the configuration tab. And through the configuration tab, you're going to scroll down to the 3D ESC motor feature tab. You're going to click enable. Now, if you're running one-shot ESCs, like old school ESCs, or you have a uh, analog ESC that needs a digital protocol, you'll have to set up the 3D deadband low, 3D deadband high, and 3D neutral. Okay. But those are a thing of the past. You really don't have to screw with them. So you hit uh, save and reboot. And another huge thing is um, idle up, or 3D idle up. Generally, most people like having a little bit of extra throttle at the very low end, keeps the quad more stable. And same thing applies with 3D mode. You're gonna want a little bit of uh, idle up. So going back okay. in, we're gonna go to configuration. And then actually right now, it's really neat. The default value is 5.5 for motor idle. Is that where we wanna be? Yeah, that's exactly where I want to be. 5.5 to 5.8 is really good. It used to be defaulted to 4.5. So I see that this is on D shot 600. We should go to 1200 if you can handle it. Okay. Uh, 1200 gives you more resolution, which is really great because with 3D mode, you're kind of having the amount of uh, resolution going to the motor. So now that we've done that, the only thing we have to do now is set up the modes. So I'm going to say AUX2 is not being used, or it is being used for flip over after crash. So we're going to get rid of the flip over after crash tab, and we're going to take over AUX2 on the setup. Because you really can't do turtle mode on this, huh? Well, 3D is like a superior version of turtle mode. Well, turtle mode actually came from 3D mode. There's racing pilots that started using 3D mode to get themselves upright in a race, mm -hmm. and then they realized, hey, why don't we make this a dedicated feature? And that's where turtle mode came into existence. I like existence. that. This is a thing we'll have to go through and probably double check before we fly it, but we're going to add range. Now this is a little bit tricky, the disable 3D switch. So right now with 3D mode enabled in the configuration tab, the quad is always in 3D mode. But you're probably gonna wanna have a switch on the quad so you could disable 3D mode and fly it normally, <laughs> which is actually what I do. If you go to fly one of my setups, it defaults to 2D mode. You have to flip a switch to enable 3D mode so that way I can hand my machine to anybody and they can fly it without destroying it. We're gonna increase this range. We're going to do the aux too. So while the um, transmitter switch is within this range, it'll be disabled. So it'll, by default, the machine will be in 2D mode. Then when you flip your aux 2 switch, it'll enable 3D mode, and then you can hit the arm switch, and then you, as you get to center throttle, the machine will then arm. I'm learning something, guys. It's a it lot of information. Like a lot of switches. <laughs> it's a lot of switches, a lot of setup, and this is why you want to do it with the props off, because if you don't set this up right, and you don't test it right without the props, you know, negative a couple of these. Cool, so the quad is set up. Now we just have to test it with a transmitter and battery to make sure the motor's going the right direction, that 3D mode is working right, and we can fly it. So we're going to go ahead and plug the quad in. Yep, plug it on in. We have voltage. Now hopefully we have connection to the transmitter. Cool. So that's your 3D that. mode switch. Oh yeah, and then we have to add in air mode. So by default, uh, Beta Flight, I believe, has air mode set to always on. And this is actually something that I've forgotten in a lot of my other videos and a tip that's extremely helpful is that with 3D mode, air mode tends to add a bit more judder to your transitions because the motors aren't actually at zero, they're idled up for air mode to keep it stable. So with 3D mode, you're going to have to learn how to actually manage your throttle in a completely new way. You're not going to have any fancy tricks, you're not going to have air mode to kind of level you out. You're going to have to get more in tune with where you need to have your throttle when to keep the quad in full control. This is going to be difficult. It is. <laughs> All right, so now we have a, one more thing that we have to set up through the configurator. configurator. Yeah, so one of the important things is setting up your receiver tab. By default, with 3D mode enabled, you have like a dead zone in the very middle of your stick of about 10 degrees. It's really, really small, but it makes a huge difference because as you go positive with the default configuration, you essentially lose the ability to manage your throttle in the middle of your stick, which is kind of maddening. So <laughs> we're going to change the defaults. This is something I wish the Betaflight devs would do because it make whole life easier. So going into the receiver tab, we're just going to change the 3D throttle dead band from 50 to about 3 or 5. You can get away with 3. Uh, the biggest thing is if you change to 3, it's going to be very finicky trying to arm the quad because you have to get within that 
very small, precise spacing in the very dead center of your throttle before you can flip the switch and have the motor's arm. Gotcha, that makes sense though. So we're actually gonna change it to like five to make it a little bit easier. Hit gotcha. save. Okay, cool, so I think that's set up. So now we just have to plug in a battery. And again, you wanna do this without the props. Oh God! See, that's why we do it with the props off. What did that do? Exactly, what did you do? Okay, so. Looks good. Sounds like crap, but that's from the bearings. Okay, cool. So now that we know the quad's working correctly, let's try flying it. You put some props on it? Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Bend them back. They're more rare than Wolverine. Well, and now they're destroyed. <laughs> they're even more rare. Uh, yeah, they, this uh, one is the rarest of all. Yeah, they're custom. <laughs> now that we got it built, we're going to try it out. Hopefully, I can learn 3D today. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm worried for you. She's worried, but I see the excitement in her face. <laughs> Here is the quad that we actually put to go. Like I said, inside, this is the Rotor Riot Flow Frame and we use the blaster motors just because I'm gonna be crashing this thing a lot. <laughs> Hopefully not today, let's not crash this one today. No, not too much, I hope <laughs> not. But at least we're over grass. But just a pointer, the blaster motors are a free replacement. And I honestly think this is gonna be a really good 3D setup for beginners. And this is something we didn't talk about earlier, the frame has a great center of gravity. When you're flying 3D, you wanna to try to get your center of gravity right in the middle where your props meet, that's gonna be your sweet spot. If you can do that, you're going to have a good time. And I think you're going to have a really good time today. I think I'm going to pull yeah, it. Yeah, let me demo first because I want to see what this does in pristine state. And I want to see what I can actually do with it. Uh, I've never flown the flow frame. I've never flown these motors. But I think, I think it's going to be pretty good. 3D mode enabled. Oh, this thing is really smooth. Much punch as I'm, I'm used to. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cricket's gonna do a lot better than he thinks because he's like the master of backwards flying. If anyone can master this really quickly, I think it's gonna be him. I hope so. I thank you for the vote of confidence, too. The biggest thing is once you get up into the air, and as you do any kind of maneuver, you want to build up a bit of inertia into the quad. Mm -hmm. So you give it a bit of a throttle blip in the direction. And then, come over. and then as you hit the apex, you're gonna go into the opposite direction. Apart from that, if you freak out, remember you can always go right side up and throttle up out of a bad situation. <laughs> That's it, huh? Yeah. That's all you gotta do? Yeah. Okay. You're terrified. Right. Looking good and clean. And realistically, when you're learning to fly 3D, you're gonna want to take your time getting used to the quad, the way it flies, the area that you're in. Because if you that was so sketchy. It was pretty sketchy. <laughs> I'm like so scared to flip it over. You got this. You got this. There you go. There you go. That was smooth. Oh jeez. <laughs> you got this. You got this. Nice smooth. Nice and smooth. Oh! <laughs> See, this is so, this is hot. Come on, guys. How, how can this not be cool? I can go upside down and be like, yeah. So that is one of the basic uh, flare rolls as you add inverted throttle to kind of go up and over and flare over something. When, how low should I be doing my flips? Like You can do them as low as you want if you feel confident in the machine. Like I, I do them as low as a couple feet off the ground. So and, like this? Oh! Yes, like that. Oh, jeez. Oh, that is. <laughs> that is. 
Dude. I feel way better th this time than I did last time. If you fly quads, your mind is already processing what's going on. So when you do go upside down, now you just have to realize that I have throttle on that other axis. And you have to get used to the way that the machine transitions from positive to negative yeah, thrust. Yes. And that's something that takes a while to get used to, especially in different maneuvers and how you build up the machine and going from, say, high throttle to low throttle very quickly. Uh, it can take a second for the motors to catch up, which will throw you off as a pilot. What, the trick that I want to see you do, and this is the first trick that I ever accomplished with 3D, which is actually backwards flying. Okay. So you gain momentum in a straight line, you flip the quad back, engage negative thrust, and carry yourself, and carry yourself continuously. Okay. I think you can do it. Got it. That was cool though. That like yeah, that little transition thing. to the back there. That was clean. That again. See, that's what I wanted for stuff like that, like things that I really could add to my flying. Yeah. So what did I do? I did y'all backwards. Oh. But that trick was cool. That trick was yeah, cool. So on his like first battery, he's already doing some cool tricks. So definitely switch over though from forward to up. Like even if you just cut throttle, like it does something really wonky in the middle there. It's part of the motor mixers because when you're passing zero, all the motors have to meet at the same point. Okay. And when you're trying to do it quickly, you're generally not getting to that point. Some motors are spinning down faster than others, slash they're at different RPMs, so they're never able to quite hit that that's zero the exact point. Same. And that's why the IQ motion motors make such a difference. Make such a big difference because yeah. they're all stopping at the exact same time. Well, it's not even that. It mixes differently. You, when you go uh, to zero throttle, and if you're applying yaw and stuff, it can actually spin two motors up and two motors down. Okay. Whereas this one, you have to have them all meet at the same time, okay. and there's no coordination between them. And you can't hit pure zero RPM. That's the big thing the IQ setup you can go to pure zero where the prop is just barely spinning gotcha. whereas with these ones you have to have the motor spun up for the um, electromagnetic field to give uh, back feed into the ESC to know how fast it's going okay. so traditional ESC's always have a like a startup speed that's constant okay. so it has to go from like hundred rpm to negative hundred rpm and within that range you know it's a little bit of a judder I yeah. said it's not it's not too crazy but it's no. definitely something it's something that I can get used to. Like, yeah. if you knew it was coming, like, I don't know it's you coming, so I just see it. definitely fly around it. Yeah. I guess you're I'm gonna give it up. see your fancy stuff. I wanna, I wanna see you get crazy with it. Heck yeah! I look for in a flight. Whew! That was really good. See, that's fun. That's like that's fun. Across the trees. And yeah. Like, oh, look at the camera tilt though. Did you change that? A little bit. Did, was that like that the whole time? Mm -hmm. I need to fly zero. Really? Yep. I think if I flew just like that, would be good. Yep. Well, let's see what we can do, Cricket. Which is weird because there's not a lot of freestyle pilots that fly 2D that fly at zero degree tilt. Cricket is a prime candidate for 3D. You gotta know how to swing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, you, Cricket. Shh. 
One thing I love about 3D saves, when you least expect it, it gives you that oh my god moment. So I think I can try to make it smoother. Yeah, that's why I say if you build up your inertia and then slowly go through the throttle ranges. Here you go, how about this? Ah! <laughs> that's pretty crazy looking. You could look up at the sky and just thrust in that direction like... <laughs> ah jeez, the recklessness. Boost back is really neat. <laughs> oh, oh. As soon as you said, Bro, I think I got this. I got this though. This, Bam. I got this. this. This is awesome. I could do all kind of crazy stuff. It's it look the zero tilt Helps. definitely helped me out because yeah. now I know exactly what's flat. But You're slamming that like throttle it. though, dude. Well, that's because I was getting ready to crash and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back from the field and <sighs> my mind is just blown and wrecked and like slight headache right now because of all the different dimensions that I've been flying. Gee, I was impressed. You did some stuff I wasn't expecting out of like a first time flyer. It felt a little natural. I think I was way more prepared this time than I was last time, mentally. Yeah, yeah so what were you expecting and what was different than what you expected? It was less smooth as Last time I flew a 3D quad, it wasn't this smooth. The transition between them was pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, now it's a lot, even just when I watched you fly line of sight, it was a lot more smooth. I could just tell by the different rolling transitions that it was much better than it was. I think I might have found my new, my new thing. <laughs> okay, this is I'm dope, guys. I'm scared to death to see what he does with 3D and reverse <laughs> thrust. It's, it's dope. So, coming from a fresh perspective, because like I've been flying 3D for a long time now, like four or five years, what would you say for newbies that are getting into it? What to expect. So for the newer people that are coming into the hobby, I would still go ahead and stick with a traditional 2D quadcopter. And, I mean, it's hard enough flying acro yeah. mode as it is. Like most people spend months just trying to master the basics of flying around. Exactly. So going into 3D is going to be a little intimidating <laughs> until you feel competent enough to actually fly it. That's to say the least. So for the people, the pilots that are out here that have been flying for a while and you just want to get some new inspiration or take an old spot and turn it into something new, try it. I mean, what it's, you can do it with your quad. Uh, and I have to say, I really do recommend the blaster motors. They felt great with 3D, and the fact you have the warranty on them kind of gives you a bit of peace of mind. Keep a lookout on my channel, guys, because that's coming in with me, and we're going to have some no, crazy no, stuff. No, 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 we got to keep away from the 3D. He's going to be too good. He's going to be too good. Some crazy stuff is going to be coming with that. No. Believe it. And on that note, guys, we're out. Till next time. See ya. And then we're going to hit save. Oof. <laughs>